So here's the beginning of my video for Wait Santa Wait. This cute little reindeer hauling his hat, running after Santa. We all know what he wants for his job. Anyway, we're going to start with Santa's hat. We're going to take our, I'm using the Lunar Blenders. I like using them on fabric. So I'm going to take the Lunar Blender. We're going to start with our Santa Red. Now I have put a primer coat onto the piece. That it's not necessary if I'm working on a light background, but when you're working on a black, dark background, it just saves you from having to put one coat on, dry it, put another coat on. So I just go ahead and I do a little primer coat on all of the parts first that I need to have it on, which is the little reindeer himself and his hat. So, okay, we're going to begin. <clears throat> I'm going to take, and I'll start with the inside of his hat. I'm going to put a coat of the Santa Red on the inside of his hat. And I just nice and softly apply that paint, gently scratch it over. I use a towel. I keep a towel handy all the time to wipe my brush off on. Now I've mixed a little bit of black into red to make what I call a, a black red, a dark red for shading. And I'm taking a little bit of that. I've wiped my brush. I don't have to clean it. And I just pick up a little of that dark red and just wisp it inwards, creating the dark shadow area inside his hat. So we'll go ahead and base the rest of his hat. Another coat of Santa Red. So you see with the primer coat on there, this paint is showing up nicely for me. Where you can see how you can still see your black through in the first coat. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this coat on. Work that in nicely, wipe my brush, pick up my mix of black and red. So I'm going to come right in first, right behind that little bit of a crease that's in your line drawing. And just nice and softly scratch that dark upwards. You're just blending it into it. And it works very nicely to work into the wet paint. So now I'm going to come along and I'm going to put some of that dark mix there and nice and softly work that up. So I'm going to wipe and I'm picking up a bit of fiery red. Fiery red is the neon. DecoArt's neons. Fiery red is a perfect highlight to put on any red. So I just apply a bit of that on there. It's going to look extremely bright at first, but it dies down. So I apply that there nice and softly, blend it in. And I'll put a little of it up here and just let it blend in. Now that will fade right in. We're not worried. This is a nice dark section. If you want, you can pop a little bit on here, but it's it's not necessary to have it on the inside part of the hat. Once it's dried down quite a bit, you may choose to go back in there and, and to pop that back up a little bit. It'll, it'll stay a lot stronger once it's dried. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and I'm going to dry the hat. Okay, so we're back. And now I'm going to start with the little reindeer's legs and his back part of his body. <clears throat> so I'm taking brown and I've mixed a little bit of brown with a bit of black to create a shading color. Just a little bit. It just darkens it. It's going to make it about the color of bittersweet chocolate. So I'm going to apply 
a coat of brown and again you can see how this covers nicely because of my primer coat underneath. So I apply this on and I've done this little guy on a sweatshirt and a gray sweatshirt and he worked out beautifully on that too. You, you can put on any color and we've done them on Christmas stockings, all kinds of things. There. So I've put a coat in that section. Now we're going to do this the same way as we did with, with our hat, only this time we're going to work from the light to the dark. So I'm going to pick up Honey Brown. And you're going to refer to your photo. And I'm not pressing hard. When I apply my highlight or any other color, my shading or highlight colors, I apply them on nice and soft. You can, if you prefer, you can even apply them with a, a, just a plain shading brush. I'm not wanting to scrub or press hard, just nice and soft. And I apply that highlight in the sections that it is in my photo. Again, once things dry, if you want to go back and pop them up a little bit, I'll apply the light there. Now I'm going to wipe my brush and I'm going to pick up my dark and I'm going to come and I'm going to apply a little of that dark all the way down where it is in the picture, all along the dark section. And then nice and softly just work that shading so that it just softly fades out to create our shadow. I'll take a little bit, come along under here, and down the back of that leg. Nice and soft. I'm not pressing hard. You might hear the brush, but I'm really not pressing hard. I'm going to go ahead and do his little tail at this time. Put my wet coat on there. And I'm not going to bring it right to his little back. I'll put my light on here, nice and soft. Just fade that in. my dark along here. Softly pull that out. There. And now we'll complete for the front section. Okay, so now for the front section, I started it and I went and put the, <laughs> the light color instead of the brown. So, back to the brown. It's always handy to have your picture nice and close. If you have it pinned up too far, you have to keep looking up. I like to lay it down close to the pattern so that I just have to glance at it when I'm working. So I apply 
that brown again, and now we're going to go into our golden brown. So I'll take my golden brown, and I'm looking and referring to my diagram. Again, I really like to have a, a dry towel, an old towel handy to do the wiping of my brush on. Just fade it towards where I'm going to have my dark. Wipe the brush. And now I'm into the dark. Nice and soft. Blend those in. If you bring it in further than you wanted, you can go back after and drag a little more highlight on it. You don't do it right now while it's wet because you end up sort of creating what I always call mud. You can just scratch your highlight back on afterwards. I like to dry brush some back on after in places that it's died down more than I wanted. Bring my brown up, my dark brown. Creating our nice little shadow behind the hat and along the front of the leg. I can see a mark where I've pressed a little hard here and I can see my brush stroke marks in here so I'm just going to pat back on there nice and soft to hide that. See it's just nice and soft to blend these colors together. And like I say it does die down so we'll go back after and we'll do um, a little dry brushing on it. I always pop up my highlights with a dry brush. So we're going to put a little bit of the brown, our dark brown mix. I'm going to fill in his little mouth and I'm going to fill in his ears. I had you put the eyes base coated in ahead of time so that you, they, they give you uh, the eyes and the nose. The eye, pardon me. Phew. Got a little hitchhiker there. Uh, so that you have a place to work around. There. They will end up having to be touched back up again. So I fill in my ears with the dark brown. There. So now we have them to work around. I use the quarter inch lunar blender to do that and we'll use the smaller brush when we're wanting to work in around the nose and in around that mouth area. So, um, so we're going to do the head the same way that we did the rest of the body. So I will just continue with that. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put my brown coat. I'm, I'm keeping the ear separate.
and you'll want to have a nice chisel on your brush to be able to get in there. If you don't, switch to the smaller one. Now, this ear is in the background, but this ear here comes right down onto the face. It doesn't have a, a behind line there, so we're going to base it at the same time. As I am. The rest of the head. Okay, so we get that based in there. And with just this last little bit on his face, and we'll be ready to do our highlighting. So we've got that nicely based in. I don't want to have a straight line at the end of the antlers there, just to, because they're going to blend down into the head afterwards. So now it's going to be our highlight. So I'm going to pick up and come with my light, my nice honey. I'll apply it in those areas that it's the strongest. Nice and soft, sweep it in. Having your photo handy again, just to be able to use your reference. Nice and soft, just nice and softly sweep those colors together. And you can see how that light, whatever you have light, lifts up towards you. And where you put dark, it's going to push it away. So it just creates depth. May as well come in here right now and put this other ear here while I have the before I put my dark in, because then I can apply my dark along there too. So I'm gonna, I am gonna put a little bit of a, just a little bit of a trim line along here. So you can see the outer edge of that ear. I'll take my light, I'm gonna pop this light up a bit too. So we have it nice and bright up at the top of that ear. Get a little of that golden brown there as well. And then I'm going to bring in my dark. I'm going to switch to a little smaller to bring in the dark. Switch to my quarter inch. So I don't overpower it. I don't want to have too, too much of the dark. When I based this one, I kind of brought it right over to the antler. In the original, it's not. Put a little dark there and just a little dark in the middle. Not too much. And remember, we're going to go back and we're going to pop 
pop it up with a bit of a dry brush after. So that's going to make a difference. All right. So he's looking pretty sweet. So we're going to move on to our antlers. Um, you can use your 3 8 for that. Clean that one out. If you're more comfortable even with your quarter inch, you can use that too. So the antlers are going to be the same as we did everything else. I save them for the end. I want them to kind of be a little different looking. That they're not one same part. I want them separate. So I apply my coat. Just like before. In the brown. I'm just going to wisp that into the other. Go over here and apply it on this one. But I am able to see where the antler stops and starts and also I didn't put a primer coat on here so they're not going to be anywhere near as bold I'm allowing the the dark to remain coming from there so you can see as this is drying down it's looking more like the original coat did so we're going to be using our light on the top of our antlers, nice and soft, pull it down. So the light is going to apply and come from the top. We're going to end up with snow on top of here as well. So we just fade that down. Now we'll move over to the second antler. We may as well put all of our light on at the same time. So we just fade that in. And again, I am going to switch to my quarter inch just to bring my dark in because I've got some small areas here where I want to create that curve in the antler with the dark fade it down and then we want that dark just to fade just so you can kind of see or not see it's just going to fade that antlers in and the same thing over on the other side put a little dark in here here and here. And I'll have some dark coming from the bottom. Just fade it, scratch it off into there. I want it to be, I'm just going to darken a little right there so that the antler is standing up off of the piece. There. So what we're going to do now, we're going to be doing it on the antlers. It's going to go all over him. So I'm going to take and put a little tiny bit of white into golden brown. Now the little bit, and when I say a little bit of white into golden brown, it's a little bit. I'm going to start by just coming and 
highlighting a little on the end of the tail. So it's just a little scuff of a highlight. It's really just that little bit brighter. I'm going to go, I'm putting it, I guess it would help if I put that up in the camera for you, uh, a little up his legs. We're looking for the places that you see in the photo. Everybody's is different. You may have a lot of dark and want a little more highlight. I'll pop a little here. A little more in the middle. And on the back of his butt. So we're just scratching these highlights on. We'll be using our liner and adding a real um, <clears throat> A little brighter pit just to pop everything up again but it's just a tiny swipe or scratch you're just kind of scratching in or scuffing in a little more highlight And you'll see in the picture that you can see it a little strong by the eyes. And then that little bit on the antlers again. So we've popped that up a bit, and now's when we're taking our liner. I did have it out here. And I'm going to use my liner, and I'm going to add some little fine line highlights. And this is in that little tiny bit of white mixed in here. And we'll put some lines, just a few swipes. You're just, you're just swiping in a little highlight. If my hat, if my hat, if my pillow cover kind of bulges or anything on me. I like to flatten it down before I... There's a little highlight there. Anywhere where you want to bring in... pull your eye into an area more. Sometimes we'll want to come back and add these a little stronger after we go and put our detail to our eye. But just 
just that little swipe. See how it just draws your eye into the area. I think I'll pop this up with a little line too. I think even a little along the inner part to that ear. There. All right. Okay, so what I've done here is I'm taking a bit of Santa Red and Bright Coral. Brush mixing them together on the palette. You don't need a lot. And I'm going to use my domed, I'm using a quarter inch dome stippler. That's a round brush that I use for dry brushing. And we're going to give them a little bit of a blush cheek. Just nice and soft. Not too much. Don't want him to look like he's out for the night. So we're going to clean up our eyes now. So I'm going to take three, go back over top of my eye with a wet coat. So that's my eye. and my nose. I'm using my little 1 8 Lunar Blender. And basing them again in the black. I want them to be wet. So now I pick up a little white on the dirty brush, work it in on the palette, and I'm just going to, so it's going to become like a gray. And I'll blend on the top right. I'm not going right to the edge. I'm leaving a little bit of black. Nice and soft. Just work that in. So it fades in. I can take the black and just soften that blend. So it's fading in there. came a little lower than I wanted there, so I'll just bring that black back up there. There. I'm going to take my zero round, and I'm going to add a comma here. I'm going to fill in the white section. And I really don't want to fill it in dark, dark. If it fills in really stark white, you may want to go over it afterwards with a little tiny bit. And now I'm going to... Just a, a, what I didn't finish my train of thought there. I would go over it afterwards with a tiny bit. You can even blot on it if you want to pull a little of that white off. But, and I should come in a little further with that, there. Um, but if it's too strong, it kind of pulls your eye too much. I'm going to blot that down too. And then I'm going to take my liner, nice and tiny. And I'm going to do a little starburst. So you can start with an X and then just continue crossing back and forth on it. And I want to fill it in nice and strong in the center. So that's my little highlight on there. I'm going to take my liner with the black. And I'm going to make sure and clean up, give a nice fine line around it. 
And I can pull in my eyelashes at this time too. Nice and a little bit of a curve. They're a little fatter next to the eye. Some people are more comfortable pulling in their eyelashes upside down. So you pull towards yourself. Whatever feels better. There's no right or wrong. It's whatever is comfortable. So if you'd rather flip it upside down and pull it towards yourself, that's good too. You always have more control with a liner if you're pulling it towards yourself. And then he's got a little eyebrow here. We can put that in at the same time. And if you feel like you want to clean up around the edge of his nose a little more, have it nice and crisp, you can use your liner to do that. Just give it that nice fine line there. So that's not too bad. He's so cute. I'm going to go ahead and do his hoofs the same as we did the nose and the eye. So we'll put a coat of black on them. You always like to go right out to your lines so that you don't have to go back and try to erase or anything like that. Just bring those right, bring your black right out and cover those. Transfer lines. So we'll go ahead and put a coat on all three hoofs. Of course he has four, but one's tucked behind. hard to see black on black. This fabric has a little bit of a nap to it so you're seeing it it kind of fills in the grains but you really notice uh, depending on what kind of fabric you're working on if it's very flat like a cotton um, they paint totally different. So now I've done that I've, I've put the black on with the dirty brush I pick up the white and I'm just going to come from the right side and just lightly scratch that in so it highlights and then again you can take your liner or is there a round whichever use the liner so it's a little tinier than that and we'll just add a couple of highlight lines on the hoofs. So there's his hoofs. Alrighty, so what we're going to start with now is the band on his back. And because we want that to have such a nice bright contrast, I'm going to start with my quarter inch again, olive green, and start from the top. And pull down and then again from the bottom work my way part way <clears throat> and give my brush a wipe off and now I'm going to come in the center with the bright avocado So we get that nice, bright, bold color there. Wipe my brush off. And then just nice and soft, blend between the two. And then down here as well. I 
if your paint started to dry on you. Pick a bit more of your olive. Come back. I'm not pressing. I'm using the nice soft flat of the brush to streak the colors together. Now I'm going to mix a wee bit of black into the olive to make what we're going to class as almost a black green. Just to bring a little bit of a darker strength in. That's it. So it's nice and dark and you see how you get that beautiful almost like a ribbony effect. I'll just pop that up as much as I want. I've got a, a hump in my cushion here so it's from the velcro in the back and I do have a board in between <clears throat> which I describe on my YouTube channel on transferring on fabric so if you want to have a peek at that at any time so I'm going to take my liner and we're going to be adding the gold trim lines. So I want my gold trim to be just in a bit, not right on the very edge leaving a little of the color of the band showing. And the same thing on the other side. Then we're going to go ahead and base coat the bells. So I have gone ahead and I have base coated my bells, <coughs> pardon me, and I've dried them. So I'm going to side load with a quarter inch or a six or an eight, either one. And I'm going to shade with black. So it's just a side load, shade with black along the bottom of the bell. This is going to give us some depth to the bell, make it have a more of a round appearance rather than looking flat. And if you think, well, I'd like to have a little shadow under the bell on the strap. You can flip your brush around and just softly pat that in as well. <clears throat> and now I'm going to take my liner with black and we're going to create the bell markings. So we kind of do, um, I need a bit more black coat. We, we, can't, we want to have the, um, almost like the crisscross. So we do that and then put your little, it's easier than trying to put those little markings on and go to them. And the other one there would be on the other side of the bell. And you're usually tempted to put them right face at you. You know what I mean? Like right in the middle of this bell. But this will make it look more realistic. So see how cute they go? And then we'll do this one. He's a little more from there. There. So 
So they're cute little bells. Look like they're stitched onto his strap. And then we're going to put a little bit of a highlight in between. So, a highlight, pardon me, a decoration in between. So we want to have some dots. This is where I'm going to take uh, my large stylus. So it's a, just a one-ended one usually. Uh, the large ball and I will go and do a few dots. So let's go one, two, three. One, two, three. And ah, I think we could see one up here. So I've done those in the Santa Red. And then I'm going to turn around and come back and dot back on top of them in the Fiery. And though that still, even though it's not brushed on, it still will die down on there. I'm not even getting any there. <clears throat> it still will die down on you and not be as intense as what you're seeing right now. But I do love that fiery red. And so I can take the fiery red at this point and come back. You know, when we talked about before that you might want to pop up your highlight on the hat a little bit. I'll just do that. And again, I don't really want too much in there. It could be a little next to the piece, but that's going to die down again too. And then I'm going to show you a little of my dry brushing that we referred to before too. So I'm just going to take a dome stippler. I'm going to take my golden brown and I'm just going to come over here and dry brush a little more golden brown. So it's just going to pop up. I'm trying to find golden brown on my palette that I didn't mix into. Just going to pop up a few places that, and everybody's is going to be different. You know, you're going to, everybody's going to have a few places where they might think, oh, like I might like to have a little more light in around the this section here. But yours might be fine there. Pop a little more, a little more dry brushing on his tail. I can see, I'm going to put out more golden brown because I'm worried I'm going to pick into that lightened and I don't want to. I just want the plain golden brown here. The middle of this section here. See how I can bring that? I had a little bit too much dark there. So it just it just brings a little softer of that golden back in there. A little there. And you can get carried away with this as well. As I'm hoping not to show you. <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to pop up as much as we'd like. Remember our light comes towards you. So if you're feeling something needs to lift up, if it's looking like it's pushed back too far, then that's, you know, that's what you'll do. You can shade on this as well. Supposing I felt like, oh, he, it's just a little bit too... Oops, a little bit too strong, or with my light, I've lost my dark. I can take my brown that I mix, my dark brown. I'm just going to come in here and shade underneath his chin with that dark brown. Now, you see how that strengthens up that shadow? It's wet right now, so it makes it a little harder for you to see, but... I could even shade next to the, under his belly on that leg. Maybe a little more by the tail. It's a preference. You don't have to do any shading. It's just if you feel that, I think you could use a highlight line there too. 
actually we could even take a little bit of that um, light highlight that we I didn't really put any there just that so you know that that pulls your eye that it's it, to that curve so it's giving a little lift to it in there so that looks pretty good All right, so now we're going to go to our pom-pom. Okay, so I've brush mixed a little bit of black and white on the palette, and I'm taking my quarter-inch Lunar Blender. So I'm putting this dark gray, scuffy little scratchy marks. These are darker little bits of fur. And I'm just using the brush to flick them just with the tip. And I'll put them along both sides, front and back. If you'd rather use your 1 8 Lunar Blender, you can. I, I would definitely put these ones in with the quarter, but if you'd rather use your, when you're adding your white, um, and I'll do it on the pom-pom too, may as well do it at this point in time. So I'm just like a, just a little scuffing, flicking the brush this way, that way with the tip of the brush. Give my brush a wipe, and now I'm going to pick up some white, and I'm going to come through, and I'm going to flick in along the back side. This is the under part of the brim. I want to leave more of the gray showing, so I'm not going with as much white. Don't press too hard. Nice light little flick, change directions. Scratch and flick coming off in the different directions. So now I'm going for the top of the brim. You see where it's going to turn around by his mouth. So I want the white stronger. So it's just with a nice little flick, changing directions. You can see how the tip of the brush is letting me have those little wispy fur pieces. I don't continue to add to the back. I want to keep the front stronger. And then I'll go ahead, letting this dry a wee bit, and I'll do the pom-pom. And I'm going to switch to my little one-eighth so that I can get some tinier and put out some fresh white. So I can get a few tinier little flicks as well. It's easier to control with the little brush. And I'm just, I just kind of rotate the brush in between my fingers like this as I'm going. So it's just a, I'm rolling or turning the brush. Generous with the paint on the top section.
and I just scuff that different directions and it's heavier white on that top section. So I'm going to go back and make sure I have it nice and heavy in the center of the pom-pom where you wouldn't see through as much. So I'm going to let that dry up a bit while we scuff in our snow. Okay, so our snow we're going to take and we're going to be using our half inch lunar blender and I'm going to pick up white and we just want to be going, I, I like to get it nice and soft and light first just to create an end uneven. By ending uneven, I mean I don't want to stop at a straight line. Do you see how it just ends off the edge? I'll hold the camera and try pull it up a little bit more for you there. Over on this side so you can see. So it just comes off the edge, uneven, nice and wispy. My my board wasn't see how this line came right here that's from my board not being underneath there I've got like a, a cutting board under there and it's nice and thin and they're flexible to get inside of cushions but they're not the same width as the cushion so when I'm painting I try to remember but I don't always accomplish what I'm trying here so I'm just nice and softly. It's not to be solid. We're not intending to have solid snow. We still want to have shadows and, and places where it's left next to the feet or the legs. Creates our shadow and our bit of depth. So I've got some snow in there. So then I'm going to take and I want to, like we did with our hat, I'm going to just kind of stipple with the tip of my brush and get some heavier bits of snow. When I get over to behind the reindeer's feet, so you'll see that we want to have it look like he's, he's, he's just ran up there and kind of slammed on the brakes for Santa when he's yell and wait, Santa wait. So we just want to scuff up a little bit of almost splashed up snow. So I'll just kind of just come in here and use the tip of the brush and and I still want to stipple in that thicker bit of snow it's just, and it's not stippling like a deer foot, like where you're pouncing it in. I'm just, I've got my brush kind of laying on the edge, and I just pat it in. But it's, again, to be random. I can scratch a little bit with it. I can pull it along, fill it in a little heavier. I kind of buried this guy's hole. Well, I guess I did in my original, too. <laughs> we get our snow in there. And then we're going to be doing our, we're going to stencil if you choose to. You don't have to, but you can stencil snowflakes in the background. I, st I stenciled some snowflakes with the um, Glamour Dust, black Glamour Dust. So that I, I like to put those in, they kind of make it look like uh, 
nighttime distant little stars. I really like those. So I put in a few of those so it gives a little something there but you don't have to overkill it with too many snowflakes. Some people don't like to put the snowflakes in at all and that's that's up to you. So I'm just going to take here, here I am back in popping this back up too. I didn't really put this one here but I want a little, now that I've got my pom-pom on. And we also have an option it's totally up to yourself, but I like to have the gold and the bells. So if I'm going to put the bells in, I'm going to need to make it look like they are threaded. So I will just, using my liner, make it look like it's twisted around. Come from behind, loop those around, and then I will stitch the bells on. And like I say, this is an option. It doesn't have to, you don't have to have this. I like them. And if you do decide and you don't want to stitch bells on, you can paint the bells the same way we did uh, with the bells on his. I'll bring a little thread looking from there too. <clears throat> so this looks like they were just looped on with these nice little pieces of wire it actually looks like. But those bells are going to get sewn on. And then I also used Glamour Dust. I put Glamour Dust. I'm not going to do it here on camera because it's just going to look white for you. But I applied Glamour Dust, Gold Glitz Glamour Dust, on top of the bells. And I love the effect that it gives. It gives that nice little sparkle to it. It's, it's really nice. I like it. So something else I'd like to show you here is that we want to add a little bit of depth to our hat a bit more. So I'm going to take a little tiny bit of black and I am going to pick up a bit of white because I don't want it to be pure black. And I'm just going to come in here and just kind of scuff it edge of my brush. Do you see how that's... Ha, I guess it would be good again to be under the camera. I'm just going to scuff that there and flatten this out again. You know how I say about that bend. So see how if I just kind of scuff it a little darker there, it creates the look of a shadow. I can still go back now and pull one or two flicks back on top of there. But do you see how that shows that little bit of a shadow? So basically other than stippling our snowflakes on, and uh, that's him. So I hope you've enjoyed painting with me and painting our sweet little reindeer. And hopefully we'll paint together again. Take care.